Baseball is never short of bad contract situations, and that goes with any sport, but when you're talking about the guaranteed money and length of years players in baseball get that's far more than any other sport, you're basically asking for a disastrous situation. There's lots of players who teams sign for big long contracts that pretty obviously shouldn't be trusted to stay healthy and or productive for the majority of that contract, and there are teams realizing that obvious reality as time goes on. For example, this past offseason, Scott Boris wanted big fat long contracts for all of his clients, something he usually is successful at getting, but this past offseason in particular, he was told by every organization to go F himself instead, with all of his clients having to settle for short-term deals. So things are trending in that way too, but there will still be guys who make a ton, Boris clients or not, and they will either live up to the contract or they won't and it will be miserable. Trevor's story has not been what the Red Sox signed up for two years ago and signing him to a six-year $140 million contract. He wasn't consistent at the plate to start and then he started getting the injury bug that's limited any playing time at all. He got hit by a pitch in a game that summer, being out for a month and a half, only to go back on the injured list less than a month later for a left heel contusion, and that was it for his 2022. In 2023, Story was now going back to his original position at shortstop with Xander Bogarts off to San Diego, only to get elbow surgery, only playing 43 games late in the season as a result, and just when he was about to finally have a normal year with the Red Sox, he injures his shoulder while diving on a play, getting season-ending surgery, so that's three of the first six years and $62 million dollars of his Red Sox contract gone to waste. Story happened to be one of several free agent shortstops leading into 2022, a free agent class that also had Carlos Correa, Javier Baez, and Corey Seager. Seager has already been a massive success for Texas. He's amazing. It's too early to see how worth it Correa will be in the longer deal he signed after 2022. And even though Story has done virtually nothing since joining Boston, I will gladly take him over Javier Baez any day of the week, year, or lifetime, no matter how available Baez is or has been to play. Baez is by far the worst shortstop in that free agency class to sign, by far the worst shortstop to sign just in general in the last several years, and many years actually, and it goes beyond just shortstops, just any free agents in general. Javier Baez has really been the biggest bust of them all, and miserable doesn't even begin to describe the depths of just how bad it is. Now, leading into 2022, the Tigers were looking to finally get back to winning, that this was their time to start getting back on top, and signing Javier Baez was partially the reason for that. That was their here we go type move. But it's also a move that even in the moment shouldn't have been made, at least not with the amount of years and money that was given. It's easy to look at the situation two years later and make fun of it, but there's plenty the Tigers could and should have seen that would have foreshadowed what's currently going on. Maybe not to this extent, but enough. When on the Cubs, Baez may have put up really good offensive numbers at times, but overall not good investment type stuff, like long-term investment. Imagine looking at a picture but only focusing on certain aspects of it rather than the whole thing. That was Baez before his Tiger days. He did drive in the most RBIs in the National League in 2018. He hit 34 homers, finished second in the MVP voting, and all that is great, but when you see he struck out 167 times, which is a ton, and he only walked 29 times, that's not a long-term recipe for success. Aaron Judge is also a guy who strikes out a ton and has his whole career. In his incredible 2017 rookie season, he had the most strikeouts in baseball. Even in his historic MVP season, where he broke the American League home run record, he was top 10 in strikeouts. The difference? Despite those strikeouts, Judge provides so much more, because despite striking out more than anybody in 2017, he also walked more than anybody in the American League that year. Yeah, he had the 7th most strikeouts in 2022, but he also walked more than anyone in the American League. He has way more pop, gets on base at a crazy rate, hits for a great average, he does it all, even with the strikeouts. So it really makes up for it, and over a long period of time, it works. But when you're at the top of baseball and strikeouts while also having one of the lower walk rates in the league and on top of that not providing much more you may have a couple good seasons but as you age and over a long period of time like a six year period of time it won't translate consistently well Baez was always such a free swinger there was just too much about his game that had red flags for someone who was seeking millions of dollars over many years yet the Tigers still gave it to him handing him the exact same deal the Red Sox gave Trevor Story six years 140 million dollars and both Baez and Story have been busts in their own ways Story just hasn't been able to play as for Baez Oh, he can play. He's playing. He's putting on that glove, picking up that bat, and going out there to play ball, and it may be the worst thing to happen in the history of the Detroit Tigers. Again, did I and most expect he wasn't going to be that great? 
Yes, but this is to an entirely new level. I mean, Baez is breaking barriers to just how much of a bust one can become after getting a big contract. It's unbelievable. Like I said, he's been mostly healthy since the start of the contract, at least seemingly. He just suddenly forgot he was a big league hitter. 2022 was bad. He hit 238, the lowest batting average of his career, excluding 2020, and his OPS, 671, was also the lowest of his career, excluding 2020 and 2014, where he didn't play enough games to qualify. He struck out a lot, which doesn't tell you the whole story at all, since he was 30th in strikeouts and plenty of hitters who finished ahead of him in strikeouts had much better seasons but with the first two numbers I just mentioned, he most definitely didn't make up for the high strikeout rate. It was pretty dreadful. So on comes 2023, Baez played the vast majority of his team's games again, and things were worse. During a game in Toronto early in the season, Baez forgot how many outs there were, thinking there were two outs, and getting doubled up on a fly ball instead, immediately getting benched by manager AJ Hinch. Which, by the way, people thought Houston didn't get punished enough for the cheating scandal. I don't know about you, but AJ Hinch having to manage this Tigers team is most definitely one of the cruelest punishments imaginable. One that might make the biggest Astros haters even feel bad for him. So Bias gets benched for his mental mistake, and this may have been the best thing to happen for him and the Tigers, at least for about a week, because starting the next day, Bias caught fire, going on a nine-game hitting streak where he hit 361. So maybe this was it. Maybe this was the spark he and the team were looking for. And then he fell back down to earth, although I wouldn't call it falling down to earth, but rather just through the earth and into the core or something. His bat just died, and he continued what he was doing before, hitting 219 with an OPS below 600 the rest of the season, striking out 110 times in those final 115 games. Baez was one of the worst offensive players in all of baseball in 2023. That's not an exaggeration, that's real. Being ranked 132 out of 133 qualified hitters, so going into 2024, a year where Baez could have opted out of his contract and of course didn't, there was absolutely no hype, if anything just dread, with AJ Hinch himself even implying that dread and just the lack of faith he and the team have in him being an impact piece. When discussing Baez in an interview before spring training back in January, Hinch brought up the additions the Tigers made along with the improvements they've seen from the young players they already had, like Spencer Torkelson, Riley Green, etc., and how guys like them will quote unquote ease the responsibility on Baez so that he doesn't have to be the star he was in Chicago. Imagine Aaron Boone saying Alex Verdugo and Juan Soto will ease the responsibility off of Aaron Judge, their highest paid player, and imagine enjoying these videos and not subscribing? Both pretty wild things to think about. So considering Baez is actually by far the highest paid Tiger, getting paid $25 million this year, which is actually a $3 million raise from 2022 and 2023, and $11 million more than the next highest paid players on the roster, two of which are just short term deals, you would hope he'd be the guy to have a lot of responsibility and lead the team. It seems like the bare minimum, but with how bad things have gotten, the Tigers themselves are at a point where they can't even hide their lack of confidence in Baez. Now, I did mention earlier that Baez was seemingly healthy his first couple years in Detroit just because he played most of the games, but according to Baez himself, he had actually been dealing with injuries over those two seasons, lower back and core issues. Baez also said that he didn't get surgery for anything, but did start a new training routine leading into spring training for 2024, claiming he feels strong and more like himself. Now, part of that could be taken in a positive way by Tigers fans and by the Tigers organization themselves to think Baez wasn't hitting at all because he was dealing with some nagging injury stuff, so that could mean maybe with him being better now and healthier in that regard, he may start hitting again. Maybe there really is a light at the end of the tunnel. Baez talked about this at the very beginning of spring training, and by the end of spring training, a month and a half later, heading into opening day, it didn't look like this new training routine and getting stronger in the core and lower back helped at all or did anything, as he hit 143 in 19 games, striking out 15 times and walking just once. Not what you want to see, but still, it's spring training, doesn't mean too much, but then again, context matters. If Aaron Judge had a slow spring training, which he kind of did, it obviously doesn't mean really much of anything. But when Baez has a bad spring, coming off of two horrendous seasons, it's pretty clear there's something to that, and the start of the actual season has only proven that to be true. Is he as bad as 2022? No. Is he as bad as 2023, which is worse than 2022? No. And that's because he's been worse than both. So far on the young 2024 season, Baez has the exact same numbers he had in spring training. He's hitting 143, a 373 OPS. He struck out 15 times 
which actually in this case means nothing and if anything is low for him. 15 strikeouts is like 93rd in the league and tied with so many players who are having great starts to kick off the season. Even some guys who have like twice as many strikeouts are doing great, but Baez has also walked exactly one time, exactly like spring training. And that OPS, 373, is the 188th best OPS out of 189 qualified hitters. He is quite literally the second worst hitter in baseball right now. And the fans aren't having it. Not that they didn't before, but Baez is already starting to hear boos in Detroit and it's affecting him as it would most people. After hitting his first home run of the season, which was also his first extra base hit of the season, which is also one of the first hits at all of the season, Baez cupped his hand around his ear for a moment while rounding the bases to kind of let the fans know he hears them. And after the game, brought up to the media that he's been booed pretty much his whole career and knows it's frustrating for the fans, but doesn't think booing helps the team or organizations, saying if they all grind together, they should stand up together even when they're down. And all of that is valid to say, absolutely. I've never been the biggest fan of booing your own players. Like that doesn't really do anything unless the player was disrespectful to the fans or something. But can you really blame Tigers fans at this point? I mean, this may have been funny at the beginning and sure, I guess you could still make jokes about it, but this legitimately is a nightmare for the Tigers and their fans. And that sounds like an understatement. Yes, the team can really only blame themselves mostly at the end of the day, considering they chose to sign him and overlook the obvious red flags in his game. But it's hard to believe they will just continue trotting him out there to play like he belongs in double A at best. It's clear the only reason he's getting a shot at all is because of the commitment and money going to him. But it gets to a point where the value is greater to just eat the money and have others play shortstop. Madison Bumgarner wasn't making quite the money by as is now, but the D-backs decided to eat that money and get rid of him last year, knowing it was best for the team because of how bad he was. I'm not saying that's the reason they went to the World Series, but giving other guys a shot in the rotation definitely didn't hurt. And as much as it does hurt to swallow that money and take the L on a player you committed long term to, if it means you have a better chance of winning, you do it. AJ Hinch already explicitly showed how little confidence he had in Baez, and this was before spring training. Now skip ahead to where Baez is coming off a horrible spring training and an awful start to the season, literally putting up the exact same numbers to start the regular season as he did in spring training, is in the running for worst hitter in baseball, and things just seem to be at a breaking point. It's hit a breaking point, a dead end, and it's pretty clear any production you get out of Baez will be below average production at this point. There's no other way around it. I, and I don't think anyone thought it would get this bad, but here we are. It has gotten this bad, and it's more than just struggles at this point. It's a $25 million automatic out, and a situation that's just gotten completely out of hand. 